Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the full council meeting of five and different parish council. Uh, first off, I need to see some housekeeping. There are no planned fire alarms. If the alarm sounds, if you get to the building, you the nearest to go the fire exit. Once leaving the building, please make your way to Muscle Point, which is located by the star car park, and is identified by the green sign positioned in the truck head. Please make yourself known to a member of the staff if you want this meeting may be recorded. The meeting may also be recorded and broadcast by the press and members of the public. Please see section 8 of the guidance for public participation, including recording and use of social media at meetings. Uh, have we any apologies? Thank you. Uh, item 2, declarations of interest. To know any declaration of interest made by members in connection with an agenda item, members to specify the nature of the interest. Um, mine is firstly with regards to 12D, um, with regard, I am the Parish Council's representative on the HPHA, with regards to the office, and uh, there is mention in the budget of the football club's changing rooms in Shaw Road, of which I'm a youth coach at the team. I, I don't think it stops me discussing the wider budget, but if there's any discussion about it on those particular items, I will not comment. Um, Mine is the high ferry and high pier. Do you want to say anything else, sorry? That's fine. That's the sir. Yes, so um, mine is in relation to the head of the trust and the trustee. Thank you. So I won't take part in that later. That's correct. I too am a trustee. <laughs> I've got three stooges yet, I can say we're going to have a trustee. Can I just be clear, you won't discuss or find what we have this no. point? No. Thank you. But, but we, we can give information to assist them. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, to receive any written request for dispensation and to grant any request for dispensation as appropriate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, three community safety updates. We received reports from the police. We <coughs> received a report from the police and they appear not to be in attendance, unfortunately. Uh, B, the ACSOs. Yeah, uh, item 4 minutes to approve the council minutes for the meeting held on the 20th of September 2024. If we run down them, everyone okay with page 1? Yeah. Page 2? Yep. Page three. Yep. Page four. Yep. Yeah. And page five. Yep. Happy to propose. Thank you. Anyone second? Thank you. Thank you. All in favour? Um, on, on, uh, 
The tree planting party uh, is planned to take place on Saturday, 7th of December. The event will run from 10 till 2 and we invite the local families to take part throughout the day, get the chance to plant trees, bulbs and join in with a few eco-friendly crafts and activities at Burnham or Open Space. Please note that there is no parking, so please try and walk. Um, and <coughs> on Tuesday the 17th of December, the cinema is showing last Christmas. Also, can I remind residents that the New Forest District Council are holding a public consultation on their new district-wide parking strategy. Further details can be found on the DFD's website. And also, Hampshire County Council are holding a survey on the barriers to walking and cycling. More information can be found on our website. Uh, six, reports by county and district members to receive brief verbal information from county and district councillors on matters concerning the parish. So, uh, I gather we've heard nothing from all sides out, but uh, all sides from all. Councillor, thank you, Chair. Yes, well, <clears throat> since the last county meeting, I attended the Universal Services Select Committee to speak in the of two new employees for recycling centres. Marked in summary. Put an amendment to be sent to the Cabinet to say then, which has to say, Mark Brady, was combined with another one to second leave not to stop the recycling centres and was universally supported. I then went to the Cabinet meeting on the 14th of October to continue my efforts to keep Marsh and Summary open. I addressed the Cabinet on a number of reasons why both sides should be kept open, including, and this is for, for this Council to take note, that Marsh should never be a tier three site as it sits within 78 miles of 4% of the New Forest District population. I also talked about the staff and illnesses in terms of workers and people who didn't have One of the um, workers uh, came up to me and he said, um, I was there, I was there at and he said, well, you know, what's going to happen? I felt dry and I, and I walked to work and if they shut the tower, I have a job. Uh, I need you to think that um, without all the workers in all the other recycling centres, also we have a job. And that allowed me to think, well, all the people haven't got cars. How do they get their rubbish? Well, clearly, they might get their neighbour to take it to the local tip. But the local tip is a very complicated it? Anyway, well, the good news is uh, uh, that the school crossing, like the school crossing controls, uh, the cabinet decided not to take any action now and keep them open. Or we'll begin to think if there's one an election next year. Anyway, on the 3rd of November, we had the council meeting where there was a Labour motion that went a few rounds, which the, the Liberal Democrats and Tories support amended to support all families, regardless of age or on financial need during the winter months. On the 25th of October, the Children and Young People Select Committee, where we had presentations on autism and cameras, both of which are resource delays. However, the cameras are still not performing to a proper standard. They have <coughs> 10,700 cases open in Hampshire for young people at the moment. They avail 1,000 referrals a month. Whilst they advise the average waiting time for the assessment was only 16 weeks, they couldn't tell how long it took to get treatment, which actually is appalling and couldn't be taken out. It's clearly acceptable and every year they come to the plan, every year it does not deliver. However, they ever continue to try and improve, they say they say. We also talk about safeguard report, the report of the children's services, which is always one we need to kept on top. Finally, I attended the corporate parenting board uh, in the first October and where we looked at the impact of alternative provision, reduced hours provision. This reduction in education time, reduced hours provision our HP should only be put in place in the best interest of the child when you're first to support the short-term success and access to full-time education. <clears throat> this is a complex situation for many young people, but the ports of having an RHB must have the agreement and written consent of parents, social workers, carers as appropriate, and to be in consultation with any other relevant agencies working with a child or young person, including the virtual school and teacher, special needs assessment and disability centre, only a part of the improving the education here. <laughs> or we also looked at commissioning quality, uh, quality assurance or supported accommodation for the refugee service, which received a report from Director of Children's Services provided updates from participation needs, care councils, all important regards, topics of children's care. The reason I mentioned about children's care is in this community of ours, there are a number of there are a lot of children on the HCPs. 
the number of children in these care issues, which is well, just gives you examples from the county council. Thank you, Councillor Wade. And so, district members, there's some consent Yep. And my attended briefing was on the updates of the Dolly Group and how I bring that out. Explanations were given for the delay and hopefully a subsequent increase in cost, and hopefully less than full of being led. I attended the parking strategy, which you alluded to, briefing, uh, uh, encouraging residents to take part. This phase of the consultation closes on the 1st of December 2024. I attended the following task and finish groups community grants, there's been a change in the delivery model and potential change in councillor grants. Um, and they're exploring the option of introducing uh, an FDC community lottery. Affordable housing, the report is going to cabinet, the preferred option seems to be shared ownership. And the financial strategy where portfolio holders reported back to the group on a standard set of questions and reports is going to cabinet. Thank you. Um, 31st of October, I also attended the briefing on Harvey Depot. Um, that was mostly about the development of the site and didn't contain any information about the impact of moving the site there and the, the effect it will have on local traffic. 1st of November, um, general purposes and licensing minor updates to local gambling, but it also recognised the complexity of the issue now that so much gambling is conducted online. On the 5th of November, I also attended the affordable housing, which was mostly a briefing, and there is a current call for sites, for any sites that might be suitable to be developed for um, potential housing. 6th of November, I attended the um, Council Tax Task and Finish Group. It made its recommendation to the portfolio holder, and um, will be to Cabinet soon, and um, then to full council. Um, anyone who has particular issues with their current council tax reduction, please make sure that they contact the district council to find out what additional support you may be eligible for. Those struggling with the cost of heating, please contact your energy supplier in the first instance. Um, they are required to offer support in instances of hardship. If this is not available, the district council is also able to make one off hardship grant payments in eligible cases. 14th of November, I attended the local plan working group, which again was mostly a briefing. There is um, already tension identified between the need to respond to data and the current need versus the desire to provide more diverse development to ensure a vibrant and sustainable community of the future. The average vacancy rate for shops and businesses in the New Forest area is 10%, which is below the 13% national figure. Car ownership average is 1.4 per household, which is higher than the national figure. 18th of November, I attended the car parking strategy. Currently, high, highest district owned car parks have the joint highest number of parking clock owners in the forest. 12th of Oh, that's it, sorry. Councillor Alex Wayne. Okay, uh, NFDC reports you voted for another above inflation rise in car park charges in the NFDC managed car parks at Joe's Lane and New Road, among others. Uh, one hour rates are up from a pound to one pound fifty, the long stay clock is up by uh, ten pounds to thirty, and the short stay up to forty five pounds to forty, and the three month clock up from sixty five to seventy. This is following last year's up to 60% rise in the long stay parking blocks, which obviously the Lib Dems and Upstream Council voted against, which left residents and businesses locally really understandably frustrated. The Council debated an amendment to the medium term financial plan by not raising this year's fares. Um, unfortunately, the Conservatives voted for the rise and against the amendments raised by Councillor Malcolm Wade and an additional one at just the inflation rise, um, which the Lib Dem group supported. The debate itself I heard quite a lot of thoughtful contributions from opposition members, and I personally challenged the comments of one of the Conservative councils who said poor people don't have cars, highlighting that many of those who work in our towns and villages earn under the average wage, which is median is about 34k, um, I would say, and that NFDC residents and businesses were hugely upset by the rise last year. Interestingly, there was no data provided to the council on how much revenue came from the significant rise in car park clock prices and whether the impact on such a significant hike on resident and business purchasing blocks. 
I asked the portfolio holder for a comparison of clock sales for 23 v 24 clocks. He shared with me in the council that although 22,105 short stay clocks were sold in 23, this dropped to 20,451 in 24, 7.5% drop. The long stay clocks dropped um, a whopping 31% from over 4,000 to just under 3,000. Bear in mind that we have an adult population of around 150 odd thousand. That's such a small number to purchase the clocks, and the income rise year on year is still over 650k. So the parking charges continue to cover more than the cost. But it's clearly having a negative impact on numbers who choose to visit our towns and villages and physically purchase the individual clocks themselves. And I have asked that this data is produced in future papers on parking charges, and I, I personally found it extraordinary this has not been presented to councillors, frankly. Still funding. NFDC made a million pounds available for projects in the district as part of the community infrastructure living funds, which the council has received. It's currently open for bids for funding from local organisations, and these funds can really help our community. So one recent example was the bike shed at Nodewood, which was partly funded from still contributions and pupil fundraising. I was invited to attend the opening on the side of Council Malcolm Wade and was very impressed with the efforts of the school pupils and spearheading project, which I supported as a local member. I also attended the opening of the Redwood Learning Zone at the school, which is an amazing facility which supports children with special education needs. Malcolm spoke in both cases uh, very thoughtfully and very succinctly. I know, I'm surprised. Um, I was also invited to speak at Wild Brown School to talk about what a councillor does and present their badges to their newly elected school council, which is most enjoyable and to great talk about why voting is so important and a value that a councillor to bring. On my new panel is resources and transformation. It meets tomorrow. So uh, I can't really update beyond telling you that we will be discussing the half year NFTC complaints report. And complaints are increasing with 125 received a third are due to a single planning matter, however, and it, there's an increase in waste and transport complaints. Complaints upheld have dropped from 53% to 41%, while 28 complaints have been received from tenants, and this is increasing 61% in relation to housing maintenance programmes and servicing. Quality of service, the delay and lack of service are the main issues raised, and overall these are quite low for all the residents that NFTC of the landlord for, but it is a concern arising. Councillor Osborne, I'm sorry I jumped in here. That's fine. Um, I'd just say briefly that um, my board uh, councillors Ashley um, and Malcolm were all involved in everything I'm saying here, so we tend to, to do a lot of um, complaints together. But I um, had a lot of complaints about the excavations going on in Hempstone Avenue on the corners of uh, the green, obviously damaging the, the wildflowers and things. So we've actually sorted that. Malcolm um, got really quite cross about it and it's been sorted. I met the um, senior maintenance officer up there and he's going to you now um, with some funds that we found, uh, you know, reinstate it and hopefully it'll look a lot better next year. Met the tree officer, he's actually planning on planting more trees just before Christmas. So that should begin to look nice again. And it's strange how many people care about that particular area and found it somewhere nice to go and sit. Um, what's the other thing? Um, I visited the men's shed and saw the new area already to run the shop and raise funds for the uh, pier, etc. And whatever, what is it for? Oh, the shop? Yep. Yeah. So what we might do. Yeah, so what they So it's a brilliant, brilliant project. Um, I've had several meetings, as you all know, I was on the front of the Echo about the GP crossing, the cycle path, Oak Road, Red Road, <coughs> and so it's been pretty full on with all the complaints and people hoping that we're going to do something. I don't think it is the end quite yet. So, um, some of the things were you know, not very well done, people got cut off, so it's going on going. Um, people are still complaining about the NSGC office here not being open enough because there are lots of things they'd like to come in and see us about rather than have to get to the industry, which is not exactly easy. Um, I attended the tourism, highly live meetings, which are excellent for projects and future events. And the Remembrance Sunday at St Andrews and on to the hospital. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mike. <coughs> Eat out the bits that haven't been told. 
Uh, since the last council meeting, we had two MPs in cabinet meeting. Um, one of the first things we talked about was the final program for the new refuge recycling food waste collection and the to dates to roll out. We are in phase three, which will be March 2026. And part of that is due to the fact that the depot won't be ending to the end to service the vehicles, which was kind of really realised. An update on the expenditure frame of community infrastructure that will be mentioned, uh, that uh, all tier three councils, such as us and other organisations for the next four years, will apply for one grant up. There will be a million pounds every year put by for grant. They're going to get over 40 million by the end of the decade anyway, so we can certainly afford it. Um, there's also an update on the progress towards achieving the aims of the climate change and national emerging declaration. Updates within this report arise on four programmes of activity, power reduction, climate adaption, nature of recovery and program management. Cover activities on the same from the 1st of January 2023 to the 1st of March 2024. Finally, the medium term financial plan, as has been mentioned, includes the car parks, and I think it was mentioned that uh, uh, we took a different view to the administration on raising car parks in Germany. Um, there is uh, one interesting fact, the district uh, the District Council is, is, not, is finally going to have a new car parking strategy and, and, and they, they are going into consultation about this. And why it's important that we as a parish council to get involved in consultation is that I managed to figure out that rather than one size fits all for car parks, there could be uses for certain car parks in certain towns and villages that may require something different from the norm. So that we, uh, as a council, uh, uh, and this is something that we should look at, and this, what we would like to see, our ideal situation for our car parts, and no free, but let's say, <laughs> beyond that, we see what, what's the best that we could do for our car parts or our community, and we push that through to try and get that in the strategy, whether it's successful or not. Finally, uh, I engage with all the party leaders and senior officers at the Employees Specific Council to get the authority to push out to county council to change the designation of March and Recycling Centre from Tier 3 to Tier 2. This is a, a long-term protection aspect because while we're there safe at the moment, you know, we need to see what happens after the election, you know. Um, but if you're a Tier 2 site, and I said from my earlier report why you should be a Tier 2 site, it will be safe. So I, I've got all the other leaders to agree, plus the senior officers and chief exec, that we really have to, district council has to really push that show, not just send them a nice little letter, really push them to try and get that designated. Because as I said, put, this protects that site for 40% of the population can use it and Thank you. Uh, item 7, reports from members serving on outside bodies. Thank you. On the 12th of November, um, I attended along with um, Councillor and Steph Osborne um, an online meeting looking at a potential seagrass project. Seagrass is used effectively as a means to lessen flooding in vulnerable areas. This project is very much at the viability stage at the moment, but it could not only have direct benefit for us. Um, but it might also help raise awareness of the associated issues in our community. On the 14th of November, um, I attended the tourism group at the library. Um, we have feedback from the recent success of village events, such as the fireworks night and Halloween, thanks to the many organisers and volunteers who make all our community events so popular. Um, there's also a reminder for those people who organise events to make sure they get the information to the chair of Life Alive so that they are included in the um, flyers and posters in January. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Yeah, just the, on October the 2nd, I, alongside Councillor Malcolm Wade, attended the opening of the new platform uh, in my role in HPHA um, at High Pier, which is opened by the Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucester, uh, part of the amazing work done by High Shed, so it's individuals to my left. Uh, it was a really, really uh, amazing occasion. Our uh, young platform was amazing. Um, local school were there and lots of other organisations, and he was very impressed with what was being created, and it looked absolutely fantastic. So uh, that was really interesting. Thank you. Councillor Osborne? I think I was given a point, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> All in one go. 
There were five categories. Our ship was entered in the shared health and well-being impact section. We have been notified that we are in the top three in our category and invited to the awards ceremony. The awards took place yesterday in St Lindsay High and Peak State Rooms at the Speaker's House in the House of Parliament where a fellow member and I attended the ceremony. Although in the top three of our category, we did not win, but to us, top three was a win. I have a copy of our entry, which I'll pass over. It's too long to read here. Uh, so that was that. The certificate we got awarded is there. Uh, photos and of this are on the my, web, my Facebook page and the Shed's Facebook page with other photographs if anyone wants to look it up. What I'd say is when I founded our Shed back in 2019, I did so to help with both, both the physical and mental well-being of our members. By receipt of this award, I believe it proves our worth and I thank you all for your continued support. You're
because it didn't depend on business that much on him because I had taken his attack on, on the quality of his ones in our hands. But um, I, I will look further into that and I'll probably need to provide a, uh, a written answer if I could for that one. Because it's, it is quite complex because these care homes are all private businesses. Uh, and there's obviously a criteria that you have to have, as I said before as well. Okay. If I have a written answer, that's, that's acceptable, thank you. Okay. Mine are not said. On this, at this point, you won't be able to share, but I'm sure I'm aware that uh, I have written to Hampshire County Council to see if the benefit they can do to try and help Red Funnel get very carefully going. Uh, I'm awaiting a reply, which I will circulate uh, around the council. In addition, uh, if this council wants to, 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 to jump on the bandwagon, so to speak, and write to the council as well, it could do anything. Secondly, it's sure I'm aware that members have been invited to a meeting about the theatre at the Glen uh, next Tuesday at 7.30 uh, to, talk, uh, to talk with uh, Mr Christopher Wardley, who's keen to establish a theatre in the area and is invited all members to the discussion. Uh, firstly, it's a question for the county councillor. Um, you mentioned what you're doing in your district role. What are you doing in your county role to push for Marchwood and Sumley, obviously mainly Marchwood for, for this area, to be a tier two tip? And do you have support from your Lib Dem group and other members for this? Um, I raised it at the cabinet meeting and said to them this would be a tier two tip because of the statistics of the population. The, the county council works in a, a very large bureaucratic manner uh, and they are designated which are tier tips one, two, three, four, based, uh, and I'll be totally honest with you, on the ones they wanted to shut because they're driven to try and save money. So they have worked out a process so they can shut some tips. Like the fact that we have managed to keep them open uh, is, is useful. But the, the bottom line is, what I didn't mention in the council, but I've had a, an email only today, that their black hole has gone from 175 million to 182 million. Uh, and that was taking into account all the savings, the shut the tips, getting them to school crossing controls, etc. etc. The, the, the amount of money they're saving the tips 1.6 million, which is spit in the ocean compared to 1.6 million. At the moment, the county council is in a state of flux, uh, and, and our choice is a long way to answer. Getting them to change anything is very hard. I will, of course, uh, uh, push for it. Uh, the best way will be uh, probably a question of the council, not this one, to do the next one. But it, it, it's at the moment they're focused on trying to get out of the financial mire that they've got themselves in. It's not a good answer, but that's, I'll try and push for it. My second point is just, is the chairman aware that once again there will be free parking in Hyde Car Parks early December and that all council councillors and this council should remind the community to support our local businesses early December where it matters and shop local and encourage people to shop local after what's been a challenging few years. Especially in Ditton Pelly. In Ditton Pelly, absolutely, but also in Hyde, Hollybank and Fairview and it's all councillors' responsibility to promote the village and speak positively. Thank you. Anyone for anyone? Uh, Ice and Taylor Council Committee meeting date of January 8, 2025 to approve the following Climate Emergency Committee meeting date Tuesday, 21st January 2025 at 9.30, Tuesday, 15th April at 9.30. Everyone happy with those dates? Council. Happy to propose. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All in favour? Thank you. Right. Item 11, interim audit report. A, to receive the interim audit report from April 24 to September 2024. Sure. Do you have anything to say? No, it's just a standard interim report. It's a good report and I know she's found. Um, the external auditor, BDO, has raise new good practice 
which leads into item B, C, and D on this uh, agenda item. So, continued appointment, um, we've had an appointment at the start of this financial year. Nevertheless, we need to agree the appointment again in this financial year. If the August is next, then it won't be until May, which obviously for the next financial year. So, uh, can you agree the continued appointment of the internal orders, please? Members? All in favour? Thank you. Um, to, yeah, B, C, yeah. to confirm that the internal auditor is independent of the council. So proposed. And on second. Yeah. All in favour? Thank okay. you. To agree that the scope of work undertaken by the internal auditor is effective for this council. Just remember this information scope of work is contained in the internal audit report and there are the checks that were tested and needed to be But there's a different set of checks that we need to do. If you're happy with them, then we can confirm that we are happy with them. Yeah. Oh, Okay. All in favour? Okay. Item 12, budget and precept for uh, financial year 25 26 to approve the higher fees and charges. For item A. Do you have anything to say? Uh, there's a, a quite detailed budget for uh, members, officers and members. I'm not sure if that members are really put into this, it's how you all. Um, it's quite detailed there. Uh, I have nothing to add, but I am able to answer any questions that members may have before we proceed. Any other questions? That's the way. It's mainly just a statement that it's disappointing that late in the day that the budget impacted us due to national insurance employer contributions and that district council councils were kept clear of this, but parish and town councils were not when we have less opportunities for income and fund and we are not supported funding by any other organisation. And that cost us obviously work has been done, but it did cost us on paper an extra 14k, which is about 1.4% on the preset, which matters. So taking that into account and the tree budget as well, which is extraordinary and a rise that unfortunately is beyond the, beyond our control, considering that the year on year rise versus the last two years um, when I was um, chair is much lower, it's not ideal, it's slightly unpleasant, but it's, it is a lower rise than it has been in the last few years. It's very, it, it turns out to good financial work of the council, the officers, and it's really, really encouraging. Um, so I, I, I welcome the fact that it is uh, no rise is perfect, but it's a manageable rise and it's a notable reduction from the last year's rise. Yeah, thank you, Julie. I just want to pay tribute to, to the officers, uh, to, to Sean, <coughs> and to Valerie, and to the opportunity to, to put this budget together. These are very challenging times. Uh, there are things way beyond our control that affect our cost base. But this is one of the best budget papers we've had because it's easy to read. Uh, it, Everything is clear and transparent, uh, and, and, it, and it's, it, it's easy for the members of the public to see and understand how the money is being spent on their behalf. Uh, and also, taking into it, take the point that Alex had just made, the fact that we were able to absorb the Labour government's uh, uh, extra uh, charge and extra sort of, uh, tax on national, national, national insurance costs and, and only get to the 6% subsidy. Right, this is really good. Because uh, we, we, they've done a brilliant job on it, and uh, I commend this budget to the county. And it's still the truth is that that the property in the new forest, in, in the water side, so chief is a council tax in the water side. Okay, so is everyone happy with the higher fees and charges as they stood in the budget report? All in favour? Thank you. Okay, next one. To approve the council budget for 2526. Second. All in favour? 
to approve the preset request to NFDC for the same year, 2526. If you confirm that number to you, then it's uh, 1,220,000, that will be our preset request to the different councils, so we just agree that then. Alright, present. Second. Okay, all in favour? Thank you. Uh, to agree that, oh no, wrong one. To consider whether the council wishes to continue to provide free office space in the Grove to the High Tier Heritage Association and the Handy Trust. Um, I'll just get the background. I, I did a quick check this morning and I have got some uh, two questions in. Uh, the square footage of the two offices are different, obviously, but the range of income, if we were able to let them out, and I've not got any inquiries, or haven't had them for two years or thereabouts, where before I had a list, would be about £1,000 per annum per office. Yeah, and that's the feedback, I've sought the feedback from the High Care Heritage Association, um, and I did circulate to members of it last week or before. They value the office, it is their administration centre. Uh, and I've had very similar feedback from Sophia at the Handy Trust. Again, it's their administration centre and they do value it, uh, the, the use of the office. Uh, and that's probably what I've got from Amazon. Councillor Dan. My question is directed to the um, Peer Heritage because I'm not going to discuss the other, the other matter. Um, with, with any organisation that we have supported as, as a council, my concern is if we, if we charge rent, all we'll end up doing is paying that rent through what we give them in terms of our, our, our charitable grant. So, in a sense, it's just moving money around. So, I think from a practical point of view, I think we can accept that the the charge that we might charge them is part of what we give them as a support for what they do in the community. So that's that's my comment on the Heritage Association. Thank you. Well, the only comment I make is that I understand there's another office that's been open for some, that's been vacant for some time. That's correct. I'm not. Yeah. Any. Right. Yeah. So it, is, it seems a bit pointless. Yeah. To we are going to um, um, advertise that one. Um, mm -hmm. the, 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 the government, they use it. One of the government departments have a sub office there. They invest. Um, and we will be able to have a service, a slightly bigger office. It, I don't know. We've not had any inquiries on this. Yeah, we'll try. Yeah. So it doesn't seem much, it doesn't look as if we've gained anything. So mm -hmm. If we did. Yeah. Right. Just move on to claim and interest, so I'm not going to address the issue of the office at all. I, just for information, I thought the council would be interested to know something about the Handy Trust budget. Um, they are given, as you know, uh, the money from us, this as a council, March Council, and they're part of that. But then the budget is actually necessary because they need to cover their costs, they need to apply grants throughout the year. So consequently, the expenditure that was planned, I didn't know the cut some of this, is planned straight out. This is what we get, this is what we've got here, and this is what they need to bring in throughout the year. So uh, any any uh, extra plans of any type really needs to be given given the budget process so they can prepare for it. That's not the problem. Thank you. Did you no, just water cycling is not happening. It's not that. So you're right, there's water cycling. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? I just want to quickly read from High Peer Heritage Association. The end of their note to Sean was We appreciate the continued support of the Council whilst recognising the budgetary demands. <coughs> I do appreciate what we give them. So, all in favour for continued along the office space. <coughs> I'm happy to um, okay. propose that for the Heritage Association. Okay. And I'll second the Heritage. First, thank you. All in favour, for those who can vote. Thank you. Um, 
same goes, hands of trust. I'm happy to propose. Anyone second? All in favour, raise your hand. Thank you. Okay, item 13, high bypass safety concerns. Uh, members are requested to consider whether or not this council makes a request to Hampshire County Council to implement measures to improve road safety on the A3 to 6 between the Heath and Harvey Landmarks. Pretty sure everyone here knows what's happened, so everyone happy? Would you, you want to talk about it? I'd like to say something, yes. Um, I am concerned that the um, LC WIP, which is the um, funded walking and cycling infrastructure, it's been looked as two separate units. We had the LC WIP agreed for the water side, and now we've got a separate proposal for the forest. That doesn't make connecting the two a logical process. And I have asked that that is looked into to see that there is some way of showing that there is an understanding that some of the new forests are part of that new LC web, but they've already had their decisions being funded or made for that. So there is no clarity on whether or not there is any thought to how people get from the waterside across the 326 to use the infrastructure they're now starting to look at. So I think um, this is this is a, an important consideration. It's a, it is in terms of safety because of the 326, should it not be gridlocked by the, um, um, the Harvey development and the Freeport and whatever, the traffic is able to go at a, um, at a faster speed during long peak times. So it is harder for people in the south of the um, 326 to get across to access the forest. And I think that is a, that is a considerable shortcoming in the, um, in the planning of the 326 development, that that hasn't been considered. So I would like this council to propose uh, making the strongest possible case to get adequate um, connectivity to the forest. Thank you. Thank you. That's nice. um, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, the problem uh, is, is greatest actually as identified in the agenda item between the Heath and Harvey roundabouts, but it actually extends beyond beyond that as well. Um, there are five in, five crossings with yellow bollards between the Heath and Harvey roundabouts, um, and uh, there are, I think there are four between the Heath and Applemore roundabouts. Uh, there is, uh, as, as we all know, a controlled traffic light crossing at the Heath roundabout, and it's north of the Heath roundabout. But that does enable people who did the Poe to cross into the forest safely on foot or horse. Uh, bicycles can't use it, um, although some do. Uh, there is no crossing, no safe crossing at all south from there between the Heath roundabout and the Harvey roundabout. And I think this um, is this actually discriminates against people um, on lower income because the you have a, a higher proportion of social housing in the net view area um, and they don't have any safe crossing to get to uh, the national park. Um, whereas <laughs> from the there is a safe crossing. <laughs> It's 60 miles an hour all the way from the uh, Didden roundabout to the Harvey roundabout. Um, north from there, the speed limit is mainly 40 miles an hour, reduced some years ago, I understand, although there's a section of 50 miles an hour, um, and then it becomes 60 once you're on the dual carriageway. And I think this, this constant change of speed limits encourages drivers to essentially ignore the speed limit. I'm not aware of any speed enforcement taking place on the A326. Um, I've got an answer from Philip Brown, the police sergeant for, for, for the was covering the water side. He said that the only speed enforcement that took place this year took place on by the speed caravan, took place on Beauty Road, in one location on only five days. 
this year. It yielded a lot of offences. Oh, sorry, four days this year. Ten days in the past two years, and there were over 600 offences recorded, including over 110 on one day in one location on Beauty Road. This shows you how endemic the problem of speeding is. There was a very small uh, handheld speed camera enforcement on Challenger Way in recent months, and that yielded apparently a handful of tickets. But that's the only record I could get of any speed enforcement. Um, so uh, the existing crossings are lethal. Um, we know that someone has now got life-changing, a child has got life-changing injuries because of the crossing, um, uh, because of this lack of protection, lack of any safe way of crossing. Um, that crossing uh, where the child was, was hit um, is actually marked, it has um, uh, red triangle warning signs, of course, which I think it is an old, a very old, predating the bypass uh, track. So it's a bridle way, I believe. I'm not exactly sure of the status. Um, but this has been some uh, active travel campaigners locally have discussed this and said that there might be a case for making that particular crossing, which is the crossing that's actually closest to the Harvey roundabout, and it goes from the Netley View skate park to a broad gravel track that leads into a uh, falling enclosure, and also to a footpath, and I think it's a bridle way that leads to Harvey Industrial Estate. If, if, that could, if that junction could be turned into what you have at Pippin Purdy, which is a Pegasus crossing, which can be used by um, horse riders and uh, pedestrians, and, and with the addition there, because you can cycle on those on that uh, that, that uh, broad track, um, if, if that, that crossing close to the Harley roundabout could be turned into, for those three modes, it might be possible to make a case for a a signal control crossing there. Under government regulations, it's not possible to do that on a 60 mile per hour limit road. Uh, so it would need to be, the speed limit would need to be reduced in the vicinity of that crossing in order to um, introduce it. But I think there's a case for saying that the speed limit to the whole of the A326 should be reduced to 40 miles per hour. Um, to make it consistent, uh, so there would be no confusion, no constant changes that drivers would have to be aware of, um, all the way from the Harvey roundabout to the start of the dual carriageway. Thanks, Ben. Um, Ashley, you want to check? Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, my colleagues here know this one is quite close to, to me. Um, I have emailed Councillor Wade in, on, with the Hampshire County Council. Um, I am also working with Councillor Webster on the issues here. But I would like to, to really note, in the, and Councillor Webster, do correct me if I'm wrong, but on this particular piece of road, we are looking at a 60 mile an hour speed limit. We are looking at a crossing that encourages children to go from the forest to the skate park, skate park to the forest. And we are looking at, there's been in the last 20 years, two deaths on that road. Just two deaths. And we shouldn't even... Can I, That's two pedestrians. I think, yes, I was going to say, because there were two... Sorry, two pedestrians. Yes, well. two pedestrians. Yes. Uh, that's it. And that, and that is now the other fatalities, including the one road recently. And we... This is absolute negligence from Hampshire County Council and from highways. And we need to do something about it. So I really hope everybody can get behind us and yeah, help us help us make some changes. Thank you. That's great. Uh, well, I'll try not to repeat what I've said. Um, to put it honestly, I have grave concerns about any of the crossings that aren't traffic lights signalled uh, to cross any road in this uh, parish, let alone a 60 mile an hour road. For example, um, children cross up and running slowly, it's a 30 mile an hour road. These are not fixed crossings. The cars go way beyond 30 mile an hour. Don't all stop, some stop, some don't. So when we talk about what we would like here, it could only ever be a crossing that, that makes cars and lorries stop. And it will be 
Lots of heavy goods vehicles use this road to go to the Harvey Depot, not to mention a huge industrial estate as well. And um, so we've got lots and lots of large heavy goods vehicles here. All sorts of people will use this crossing to go across. We know that lots of young people will go and utilise Harvey Enclosure for a variety of reasons, and, and right so, but they will, they will cross it. This is a road that has next to no lighting. It's on the edge of the National Park. It is 60 miles, goes down to 40 very, very quickly, and the visibility is poor. There was an accident, a free car accident last night on this road. I completely support um, why this has come forward, and I, although I'm realistic about what HCC will, will do, I, I'm kind of, in a somewhat cynical way, hoping the figures push them towards some form of answer here. But what this council can do is it can try and have a universal opinion where it says, actually, we don't want one more injury, one more fatality, one more car accident, one more child impacted. If we know people of all ages are going to cross that road and do whatever they want in hardly enclosure, let them do it safely, let them do it securely and make it fair. The road doesn't need to be 60 miles an hour. The road needs, needs traffic lights and effective crossing. People simply don't need to be going that fast down the A326. And although it's not ideal next to a roundabout, that crossing by the heath means that people can cross safely and people stop. And yes, I just use it, but frankly, where else they can cross. And I, I get very concerned when I see dog walkers halfway down the hill in the pure darkness trying to cross that road. It worries me, and I think it's luck more than judgment that has led to not being an accident. Um, so the relevant part, first, first, first link to this, we as a council, at the very least, goes back to this, and I fully support, because I have real, real concerns uh, over this, this road, and I fully support the proposals for this. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, if you all know, I live alongside it, so I know I'm I hear the cars and everything. So, uh, can I suggest I work with Better National Institute of Development and Sorry, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. On the left of you side, is it possible to cut back some more hedging? Because I've crossed there a few times and it's quite sheltered. So, in the interim, could we open that up so people could see a bit more? So, I know when I cross there, you can't see much, mm -hmm. uh, the cars can't see you. So, obviously, that's not a farm solution, but that might help. Okay, right. Um, there's a lot of individuals here. First of all, to address Philip's point about the ACWIPs, both of them were done in isolation. There was not a level of joined up thinking put in place by a level, and, and that's clearly wrong, and, and we should make that. As regards the age of six, I, I wrote to, to Hampshire Council uh, 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 and uh, a message in the media, an immediate fatality. They don't really want to make any difference, which is not acceptable. They are quite what I would consider an obscene policy. I have to be left with death and destruction before they will do any road safety. Uh, it's not acceptable at all. The council Webster raised the point with me that there was a traffic order put in place to reduce that section to, to 40 miles an hour uh, and sent it to me. So I have asked, sent it to the Assistant Director of Highways to explain to me why, when is this been put in place and why it hasn't. Because if, if that is put in place, that would then uh, make the possibility of a get crossing all the more realistic. There is also, for you, if you some members, I remember the races in the past, there was supposed to be, it is supposed to be, a controlled crossing just south, south of Applewall roundabout, south of Horse Ride, the South Place, and so forth, that the cycling organisation perceived, and I perceived, and we want to do it. But then when Fulby Waterside disappeared, instantly the money disappeared to put it in. But uh, it is there, so in the future, uh, they may well get one in that point. Clearly, we now need the control, we obviously need control crossing in the section between Harvard uh, and Hit the Heath Roundabout. Uh, um, really, what I would encourage this council to do um, is to write to the county council with your concern about the, 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 the accident that took place recently and the potential for further accidents. And, and a good point, it is next to a skate park uh, 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 and, uh, and a large housing estate. 
and we've got crossing points on a road that's 60 miles an hour that's not lit. It, you know, it, uh, it, although it doesn't hit the technical criteria, uh, it certainly hits the criteria of being a big and I think we should put all effort behind it to try and do that. I'm certainly doing that. Thank you. So, everyone happy internationally? Get together with Sean and get together something. Yeah. I'll get in touch. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Consider a response from the Council to the open consultation in making votes, removed statements, and proxy voting at local authority meetings. The Government is consulting on enabling remote attendance and proxy voting at local authority meetings at closing date to respond to the 19th of December 2024. Members are requested to consider the Council's response. Okay. Right. Sorry. Uh, no, I just want to. There's near history on this point because <coughs> this was came in during the COVID pandemic where people had Zoom meetings and what I say is vulnerable. And the government at the time took it away before isolation stopped and vulnerable people were being impacted. And it was an appalling decision at the time. It, I, one of our councillors at the time couldn't attend meetings and would have done and would have contributed because you were vulnerable and isolated. There was simply no need to remove this rule. Now, we as a parish and town council are not as impacted as strongly because we all live within five to ten minutes of, of here and the majority of times we make meetings. Uh, but why the council was in particular, this would be hugely important. It would encourage better attendance, it would encourage people who might have childcare facilities who might, not, who might be isolated and not well to still attend and take part, uh, and encourages better debate. I am all for this because most councils will use this sensibly. We won't all have every meeting uh, in our offices, but it provides the option and opportunity if someone uh, is unwell or has caring duties to still be involved and have their attendance. So I'm not, I, 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 I may go on my own on this, but I am strongly in favour of this and they should have brought it in before. And it's noticeable that a change in government has allowed for a change in law. But it will also encourage more people who might not think they can be a parish councillor, that actually it's there for them that they can be supported to attend meetings virtually or otherwise. So I'm good for this. Anybody else have a new to share? I think I can attend a lot more meetings. I'm um, sure so I'm not the only person that has a job that can't always get through on time. So. The hours that I can attend the meetings, I just can't get to here. So, you know, it would open it up to a lot more people, I believe. And especially people that maybe have children at home and they can be in bed and they're at home and they can have the meeting and be part of it, but they can't leave the house. So I think it just opens it up to a, a lot more people. Mm -hmm. Sure. Is there any more members? Because I've got suggestions. Is there any more members out of here? Just on. But Jim, uh, uh, Alex has always said it's not just probably has to be quite the leader in face to face meeting because there's a lot of, of, of interreaction being gained from being in a room with people and human beings and talking about them. However, we also must recognise that we're in the 21st century uh, and in doing so that uh, the challenges that, that people face to become councillors or to do other things are very different to what it was that's fine, 10 years ago, and certainly 20 years ago. Um, and there's the two issues here. There's one about remote tenders and proxy voting. And those are two very different issues that you need to separate. As regards uh, uh, um, remote meetings, I think the, the answer to this is to allow hybrid meetings where both people could attend in person if they want to, or they could attend remotely. Mm -hmm. And it may be that allowing the council to do that, you could have some meetings that are totally remote. You know, you don't have to, all of them have to be in person or all of them have to be hired. But what we should do is give councils the flexibility to make arrangements that suits themselves and their own circumstances 
one size fits all doesn't work. But allowing a level of flexibility would uh, allow councils to hold a council meeting like this in first. But if someone couldn't attend, they could attend remotely. Or other meetings we could attend on the screen like we did during the pandemic. <coughs> so a level of flexibility uh, to allow that, I think, is the right thing to do. Uh, and, 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 and there is a, I still think there's a very positive for, for meeting face to face and social interaction, not in the little S bit, in the small S rather than the because there is an option for that. But there's also, we have to accept that we are in the 21st century, we should be flexible to remote meetings and things. If we have crops in those things, that is a different issue, and we need to look at that. I really need to look into that because your property voting is where, as you all stand, you know, Ben can't make it, I vote for it. But how do you know that I'm going to vote the way Ben would vote? Or say what Ben would say? Mm -hmm. That's why the, the property voting issue needs to be really thought into before you do it. Not I've seen them. But you know, I think no one's going to ask Anthony now to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, so it, it needs to be, to be looked at. But certainly we can, we can, we can consider um, remote tenants. Interesting. I know the SLCC uh, are now concerned about a proxy voting one. And that wasn't what they asked. That's not what they've got government for. It's just been lumped in for government consultations. Yeah. So, Okay, so, so, I just want to echo the point of voting. Uh, I share the concerns mm -hmm. of Council Mouth made in property voting. My main argument is on hybrid and, and giving the Council the flexibility to decide and have that option. I would also make a flippant point that there's a lot less grandstanding and BS and waffling on those. Well, I, I can tell you the district is 10 times more enjoyable than not having to know some councillors get three, four minutes to really go off topic. And people stay to the point, yeah. which when you've got a lot of business really matters. Yeah. Oh, so, generally speaking, there is unanimous support here for the hybrid type meetings. Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. But not necessarily for the proxy. Could you kind of give an indication when you raise it? to Sean, your view on the proxy side of things. I don't know, I have opened it up to see how we do it, but Sean yeah. could do a substantive response from us all um, as a council got with a view on the proxy side. If yeah, it it. It's, yeah, I, I can finish on your feedback tonight, positively hybrid, positive the proxy. I can do that okay. This is one of those government consultations. It's, you know, <laughs> So I can develop on that and send it up on the council to half and that's agreeable to members. Because I've been relaxing on the proxy, which we're not going to do. Thank you. Yeah, that was being saved. Yes, yes but and I'll take it, yeah. All in favour? Thank you. Uh, item 15, finance, 2023, 2024. Eight, Mr. Thank you, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. And thank you for everything you do. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Well, yeah. Thank you. Uh, A, to resolve the reconciliation of October 24. I've got it. Is that just a vote? Yes. Thank you. Any second? All in favour? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right, to approve the paid expenditure of October 2024. Is there anything like this particularly? No. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Proposed? Mm -hmm. Second. All in favour? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right, seek to note the financial strategy quarter two, 2024 2025. Do you want to say that? No, that's the way I Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 16. Exclusion of press and public. The result that the press and public be excluded from the meeting for the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in part 1, Schedule 12 of the Local Government Act 1970. Uh,